this here. I've been gone on the road uh, so far this month. I've been to Western Kentucky, Alabama, Texas. Now I'm back in Ashland. Next month I'll go to West Virginia. Deer hunting season. <laughs> My wife don't like this time of year. But uh, then uh, can't, I can't remember from there. I'll be somewhere else. But I uh, appreciate you all praying for me and, and uh, as I'm out on the road and praying for my wife and Christian and kids and, and uh, just love you guys. I appreciate you. Uh, before I get into the sermon, I got a couple announcements that was not put on. Uh, next Sunday, this needs to be in by next Sunday. So Kisses of Grace backpack program uh, needs some things to help feed some people. Uh, it's uh, kids that, that don't have anything to eat maybe when they get home or the weekends. So they need cans of uh, pasta, pop, uh, the pop-top lids kind of like that to make it easier for them. Uh, Vienna sausages. Jill, I know that's your favorite. Jill's just rebu <laughs> Jill's rebuking them. I played a joke on Pastor Jason, and it really it's toward Jill because she gives me a hard time about me eating certain things like Vienna sausages and uh, potted meat. You all saying that uck stuff? Come on. Anyway, I, I, I got him all the canned stuff I could think of and got it in a gift package just for Jason. And Jill went and buried it out back. <laughs> Ran out of cat food, so they sent it to the cat, so in case you didn't hear that online. So let's all stretch forth our hands to Jill and get her delivered. Also, a 16 ounces jar of peanut butter, microwave cups of mac and cheese, and Roman noodles. Uh, so those need to be in by next Sunday, November the 6th, here for Sunday morning service. So if you all can, that's be a blessing. And also next Sunday is Pastor Appreciation um, Sunday, and because Pastor's gone out of town, can't do it, usually it's in October, and that's kind of one of the struggles. A lot of people book me to come in and speak, and, and all, I get to see so many Pastor Appreciation times, Jason. It's pretty cool. So bring cards for, you know, Pastor Jason, Pastor Phil. and pre Listen, how much we know we appreciate them. Amen. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I was sitting there thinking while I was getting ready to come up here and speak, you know, Pastor Jason had scheduled me last year in May, I think it was, to come speak, and we worked out a date. I don't know if he knew I'd be coming here regularly, but maybe he had a prophetic word. They're like, I'll just get him here. Maybe he had that plan? Yes. He had that plan. So that was his plan all along. So, amen. He's a lot more spiritual than I am, so I didn't get it for a while. <laughs> but God is good. Amen. Uh, I want to open up a little bit some things in my travel. Last Sunday, uh, I preached in Dallas, Texas, had a phenomenal service. And I've been preaching on miracles and, and studying miracles. I have really, I mean, I have spent some hours studying on miracles. And I've been going through the Bible and seeing how, you know, let, let me, as I open this up, miracles happen all throughout when Jesus' life, they happen in Old Testament, they happen in New Testament. And they happen different ways. And so I've been like studying, like, you know, what, I mean, how many knows that you need a miracle, number one? How many know, has a miracle that you got? have how many knows someone that needs a miracle all right and miracle can be many things you know we use the term miracle sometimes so as I was in Dallas and, and I'll tell you a couple other for the last few weeks of what's been going on some things but Jason I, was, I thought of you when I was sitting there I literally went to six different gates last Monday they dropped me off at the airport I come off I checked in the airport had my bag I carried on Gate C30 was right where Jason was at. I went all the way to Skylink, all the way around Dallas Airport and went to B19. When I got there, I got a message that said, Gate change, C30. <laughs> so I got all the way back on the Skylink, went to C30, literally sat down. Gate change, B17. Back on the Skylink, going all the way back around, sat down, gate changed, and our Lord, help me, Jesus. Six times. Finally, I went to the lady, and I said, when are you going to decide what gate I'm going out? She said, just sit still. I said, I'm going to go right there. When you find out, let me know. After six times, and I had to change again. So while I'm sitting there, I'm sitting, in I just love to watch people. 
And I'm sitting here, and literally, Jason, this one we've got under your crawl. I mean, Jason's good friends. This guy was walking, and literally, the garbage can was right here. He had a handful of trash. He was walking like this, and all he had to do was do this. Instead, he went and threw it in the floor. The spirit of slap came on me, <laughs> but I did not do it. And I thought, well, how crazy. So I, got, I thought, well, there's a sermon. How are we taking out our trash? All right? So then I watched a little bit further, and there was a guy that got in line. And they had all kinds of cancellations that day. I think I was delayed four hours. And so there all kinds of these cancellations. So there was a long line in American Airlines line to get their tickets changed and change days. And they were all just in line, Joe. They were just like, it was a long line. So I wanted to get close and got up to the edge and just was watching people. Well, there's a whole, just imagine like 100 people standing in line. And this guy waited until he was like 50. And then he just got out of line, and I watched him. He walked, and he looked at the, at the thing to check where his flight was or going or whatever he was doing. And he walked back in and got right back in front of the guy that was there. And the guy looked at him and said, uh, didn't you get out of line? He said, yes, but I was right here. He said, you ain't no more. <laughs> Kenny Largo, fight, fight. <laughs> I got three hours that just boxed it out, you know. We'll see. I was going to stand in there and say, let's see which one wins. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, ding, ding, ding. And so I just watch these people, and I watch people get out of line, and then one of, the, one of the flight attendants or something made an old lady, older lady, get out. She literally almost picked her up and said, you stand over here, real hey. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, help me get my mouth shut. I was struggling. If my wife was with me, she probably would not have. And, and I thought, all these things are going on, and we wonder sometimes how our world is. And we see that if there's any, not anything Jason people needs is they need a miracle that Jesus touched their lives. Oh, yeah. I have friends, and I have, I have a good friend here visiting today, Randy, and I appreciate him coming. There's people that need miracles in their life. And we need, we need, we need things in our life. So let, let's, uh, today I'm going to do it just a little bit different. Normally we give a scripture, and then we get an introduction, but I'm going to do it a little bit different today, Okay. So I want to walk you through some things before I get to the main scripture so you'll be ready that when I get there, you'll be ready to get that scripture and chew on it, all right? And um, so when I think about that, that, you know, a few, if you follow me on Facebook, I'll put this post down. I'm going to read it the way I put it on Facebook. The truth in the words of the Bible are examples of how God chose to use different people in different ways. So many judge others by or try to make them express their faith like theirs, we need to stop that. And I'm going to show you why from some scripture in a minute. But listen, God works through people with different abilities and disabilities. All right? He'll work through it different ways. So, and listen to me. I know I have disagreements with people. I know they have them with me. Right now, people are disagreeing with me because I'm growing my hair and I'm just trying to be like the series that Pastor Phil done, be more like Jesus. <laughs> my wife don't like my hair not now, but I want to be more like every picture I've ever seen, Jesus has long hair. I just want to be like Jesus. I'm going to donate, but right now it's tough. I've got these duck tails. Catholics going every which way and then not going everywhere. And I know Pastor Jason, you know, he goes every three weeks and has his cut even if he don't need it. That's not me. All right? Is it three weeks, Jason? See, I'm, see, see, that's how good friends we are, all right? He knows I don't go to the barbers and he goes every three weeks. But I still have plenty, listen to me, I have still plenty to learn when it comes to Scripture and I have plenty to learn from my friends and people that God put me around who view different than mine, whose views are totally different. And, and listen, and when we think about that, when the Lord heals anybody, listen to me, here's the key when you're talking about healings and miracles. When the Lord heals anybody, he gets the credit. Not the person that petitions it, and not the person that 
receives it. God gets credit. And so I got a definition of miracle, and here's the definition of miracle that I looked up. It says, an event that appears and is impossible to explain by the laws of nature. And so is held to be supernatural in origin or an act of God. One that excites admiring awe, a wonderful or an amazing event, a wonderful act or a person or a wonder. It's a, mir- it's a, it's a miracle, or we use this term, that was a miracle play. That was a miracle they done that. And we hear all kinds of different things. And listen to me, get, get this. Why are the TV shows that are on TV with Supernatural so popular? Here's why. A lot of people will come out and say, well, it's because it's demonic. Yes, there is a demonic type thing, that, but counterfeit. But the reason is people are searching for the Supernatural. They're looking for something that, that they have, you know, that they haven't seen before. Yeah. And I almost wanted to come in. I'm, I've got a, I'm working on another sermon later on some things about truth that sometimes that we, we say this. And when Jesus comes back to get me when I die, he's not going to send no angel to come get me. You're all like, oh, well, yeah, tell us about that one, Kenny. Because you know, we see in movies these angels coming to get people and getting their spirit. That's not biblical. The Bible says, Paul says this, to be absent in what? The body is to be present with the Lord. He doesn't say to be present with angels. Angels are here to help us, protect us, hedge of angels. We read Psalm 91. I can, if I don't be careful, I'm going to get over in another sermon. But the world says, I'll show you that, that, you know, I'll I'll show you this. But the Bible says, no, you believe me, and I'll show you what I can do. All right? And so when I think about miracles, and I I thought about sometimes in my travels, I, as a matter of fact, I was going to, um, where did I go? I was going to Alabama. I got hungry, and here I am trying, I'm trying not to eat unhealthy stuff, Jill. I really am trying. My wife pushes me a lot. I am trying. I love my wife. She wants me around for a long time. I get it. But I sneak and get food. (laughs) Confession. (laughs) Pastor Jason, I come to you and I confess that I sneak and get food. And, but when we think about that, and, and, and I thought, I, mean, I, was, I was doing pretty good, and then I was really doing really good well, last night because me and Kathy went and got some food because we were out of food, and she got a package of, what kind of, Butterfingers. I said, she goes, I really want them. I said, get them, baby. <laughs> and here's why. Because I know my wife. <laughs> She literally can get a bag of Oreos and eat one cookie. Can Susan do that? Absolutely. The Lord did not give me that ability. <laughs> I eat the whole row the first time, start on the second row, or heck, let's just do the whole package. <laughs> go big or go home. Amen. Preach right. Preach on it. Go big or go home. And so, Ben, I got me my favorite, paydays. We both got little fun size, paydays. And, I, and, and so I can't remember what day it was, and we come in, and I told her last night, I said, I think I'm going to give me one of my candy bars. She goes, I wish I could too. I said, why? She goes, I ate the whole bag. <laughs> that a girl, Kathy. She's getting it. So when there's a bill. So I was going through Taco Bell, and this lady here was very kind, and they were very busy, and I can tell she was having a bad day, but she was very, very nice, very kind. And I took and got the phone number from the receipt from Taco Bell in Berea, Kentucky, and I called the manager, and I said, whoever the lady was working drive through, she'd done a great job by being friendly and nice and all that. And she said this. She said, thank you so much because we never get calls like that. Oh, bless her heart. 
So I thought about that and I thought, well, you know, how, how, how come it's so today, you know, when we think about this, what about all the times that you did give good, have good experiences? Did you compliment people? Or do we focus on the bad experiences? Okay, so I'm going to try to get this all done. And Matt said I need to be done by 12. I may not make it, Matt. Just kidding you back there. <laughs> but what about all the time? See, as we think about this, does this sound familiar today? Because when, how many times have we failed to acknowledge the good in people but let them do something wrong and we're ready to crucify them? That'd be a great place someone would say, preach that, Kenny. <laughs> Come on, Jill Banks, help me out. Come on, Kenny. All right, here we go. I knew I can count on Jill. But thank God for his mercy. Thank God that for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. So when I thought about that, here, here's going to get I'm going to give you a couple little scriptures, a few scriptures to get to where I need to go. John 16, 13, and 14 says this. New Living Translation. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. Now, this is the Holy Spirit speaking about Jesus. See, beliefs are not only a matter of evidence, but also a matter of interpretation through how we hear it, how we read it, and how we experience it. So one person may have an experience with God and touch them one way, and another person will receive it another way. Let me give you a couple examples. How many of you remember when Jesus healed the person with putting clay or mud in his eyes? Now, I know my wife. I know a few other people around here. Lauren is this, this way. I guarantee they would not want someone to take spit and put it on their eyes. <laughs> My wife is not a germaphobia, but she's close. I got the cleanest hands since we've got married ever. I mean, I'm a clean person. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, having with the, I mean, and I've heard stories, Jason, of people like pregnant women of prophets and like punch them in the stomach, and I'm thinking, like, wow, the Lord had never told me that, Joe. I would, but you would have to know that you know for no that it's God doing that. Because if you, let me just say it this way. If you come punch my wife in the stomach, yeah. not a spirit of slack won't come on me. <laughs> spirit of whoop. Whole can. All right? Fist. <laughs> but when we use the word miracle sometimes, I, I'll give you an example because, I mean, I, I'm a football fan. It's a miracle that my team's going to win today is the Broncos because we're terrible. <laughs> Doug? <No comment. laughs> or we use your favorite football, basketball team. We say that's a miracle. Pastor Phil used the one about the hockey team. Miracle. Those, that's a miracle that it happened. And those are terms that we use, and I think we use them lightly. But what about any miracle God does in your life or those we know or don't know. And when we think about or read the Bible in dealing with miracles, either for or against. I mean, there are people that are against miracles. Yeah, well, God can't do that. God can't do that. Well, it's funny how he used clay and spread it on the guy's eyes. Not funny. I mean, they say that. I say, well, tell me what, if, does this say that? And then I'm going to show you here in, in the biblical things here in just a moment. How about when Paul handed out handkerchiefs or things from his clothes? How many of you ever got a prayer cloth? How many believe in prayer cloths? All right. How, how, about, when, um, uh, how about oil in the Bible? The oil itself doesn't heal. The handkerchief itself doesn't heal. But what's healed is the power of God and faith in Jesus. Now, I'm going to give you a couple examples. I preach in... Um, Levensburg, Ohio, this uh, one week in November can't, or October. And literally the pastor's hand, Jason, was, I watched him, and all weekend long his hand was like this. And he's, he, he's a young 
43-year-old guy. And I, I noticed, and then we were at lunch on Sunday morning after church, and he, I said, man, what's wrong? He said, man, I don't know, but something's happened. And I said, I said you know, we prayed with, for him then. And uh, he, he, uh, we went to church that night, and I start, that was the first night that I had started preaching on miracles. God touched his hand, and when he went up to dismiss, he was doing this. And he said, you know, and, and then there was another one where the young little, a young girl, I think she was 16, she had been struggling with anxiety, some other stuff going on, and we prayed for her, and she didn't want to be around friends, didn't want to be around anybody, and her, her mom messaged one of the pastors, and the pastors messaged me and said, you not believe the change that happened on Monday morning with her. There's two examples. I got, I've got some more, but I don't have time to give, give you know, all of them. But everything, listen to this, everything about the Bible is supernatural. If you think about it, salvation is supernatural. It's supernatural. And so when we think about it, we read and, and dealing with miracles, either for or against, we've got to understand this Bible that, that we read is a miracle in itself. So every time you read it, let me, just, let me help somebody here. Don't worry and say you have to read so many chapters a day. Listen to me. Get fun bites. Don't have to eat the whole bag. I'm glad I drove separately today. But get fun bites of it, Bridget. Get, get little nuggets. Get, get bites to say, I, I'm going to, and you, don't, you know, sometimes we get, we get, we're, we are, listen to me, we are not in competition with anyone else. I'm not. That's what I like about our stuff. I mean, we're different. Did you watch the program on Wednesday? We're, all, we're different. Jason doesn't do like me. He doesn't. I'm not like him. I don't want to be like him. I love him. I love you, buddy. But I don't want to be like you. And you don't want to be like me, do you? Because there's no way his hair would grow this long. I mean, he's hot and tight. That's Okay. <clears throat> who but God could have conceived and caused men to compose such a perfect book than the Bible when it's inspired word of God. Now, I've done some digging. I got, I, I went, Jason, I went back to some of my old books, old school stuff. I got a, I've, got a, I've got a series of books in my office that, uh, that lists every, like, all the men of the Bible, all the, all the women of the Bible, all the prophecies of the Bible. <clears throat> and I got to digging in those things, and I found one that said all the miracles of the Bible. And I have been eating it up because that's, I mean, so when I find something, I've been chewing it. That's my wife. I get in my office, I disappear for a while, and then I come back out, and I go back in. And I, and I was thinking, I've only got so much time to preach, and I'm not scheduled to preach again for a little while here. And I thought, well, I've got to get it all in while Pastor Phil's gone. But this sacred volume of this Bible took 1,500 years to complete. Now, I'm going to give you this information until we get to the Scripture, all right? And as being in existence in its completed form for over, as, as this Bible, it was over 2,000 years. We'll use the 2,000-year term, okay? So as its completed form, it's complete. And yet it's as strong today as ever before. Are there, listen, does anyone, I'll ask this question, does anyone here today have a book in your home that is a thousand years old? Nobody. I don't have one either. I got some older books. As I was reading books about, figuring out books, it's been said that when people read a book a thousand years ago, and if they printed that, and, and each year they printed 50,000 books, 50,000 books. Now, I don't know how thick they are. Kenny Large likes to read the thin ones. Some of those big ones, when I done my doctorate degree and they told me how much I had to type, I was like overwhelmed, but I got through. And it was tough. And sometimes I even looked and I said, Jason, I, I, remember, I remember telling the instructor, like, where would I ever use this stuff? And it's amazing how sometimes I have, but some things I haven't. But if you would take 50,000 books over a 300-year period, 
only 59 of them would be reprinted. All right? After a five-year period, an ordinary book would be dead to the publisher. Now, let's think about the Bible. Yet century after century, the Bible has been reprinted. We got it on our phones. We got it on our iPads. And the amazing thing is, 66 books, 66 books of the Bible into one book is another striking evidence of its supernaturalness that on any given subject, it's harmonizing with our Christian beliefs. That we are getting that and we're saying, okay, so I'm kind of giving you some information into where I want to go. The unity making these 66, 66 books as, as we get that. And here's a cool, cool stat I found. There's 333 prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus Christ. And in the New Testament, it quotes it word for word 278 times. We live in a world that we can't even get people to agree on stuff every day. But yet God supernaturally put all this together. So when I think about that, and, <clears throat> and this goes to this next scripture, and I'll show you how it, how it happened. Look, look at Luke 24, 27 says this. Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Jesus took them and said, watch this. And he pointed out to them, J Jason, and said, here it is. What, this is about me. He, he sat down with me and he showed them that. So when I thought, there's no other book that has influenced men, women, or children, or nations like the Bible. And miraculous in its working, it produces miracles in the hearts and life of those who believe it. And we will never be able to explain all its truths that it gives life. Listen to me. Here's what he, he wants to give life to the dead. That's how you're saved. And even though people will try to say it's not true. But look at this scripture, Hebrews 4.12. It says, for the word, of the, Lord, the word of God is alive and powerful, and it's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between the soul and spirit, between joints and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. How many has ever been reading the Bible and you thought, whoa, that's me? How many have ever heard someone preach a sermon and think, that's me? All right. How many of you ever heard someone preach a sermon and said, I didn't know that was there? That's me. I'm telling you, I've still got lots to learn. Don't never think you can't learn. So when I think about the Bible, is still the, listen, the Bible is still the world's best-selling book. Even, listen, even though it's thousands of years old, even with all the books being printed, with all, it's, you know, e-books, downloads, apps, I don't even know all the stuff. It's still number one. That's pretty cool. So then I thought, well, why is it it sticks out about miracles? Look at this scripture, Acts chapter 2. This is where I'm going to kind of getting ready to go. Look at Acts 2.22. People of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. He lists three things here. He lists miracles, okay? Here's miracles. The power displayed in an act. That's a miracle. Power, his power. He lists wonders, which is the marvel of the act as having great power or influence, and it affects you. Okay, here's a sign. Third one he mentioned, the sign. It's character as a token or a note of something beyond itself. How many of you ever said, I got a sign. I get this sign. Okay, so when we think about that. So the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit should make Christians realize what a privilege it is, listen to me, to be part of the kingdom of God. And I'm going to show you, look at this scripture in John. This is the key scripture. I'm going to want you to focus on that, and then I'm going to give you a miracle listed that I'm going to read. John chapter 14, verse 12 says this, I tell you the truth. Anyone, everybody say anyone, anyone. who believes in me will do, listen to me, will do the same works 
I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with my father. Jesus looked at now in this story in context, he's dealing with, with uh, Philip and Philip's not believing and he's dealing with that and he said, look, at and then Jesus looks at him and all the other disciples are there in this room and he says, anyone that believes in me, how many believes in Jesus? How many is a Christian? So if you are a Christian and you believe in him, you should, this, this applies to you. Remember what Pastor Jason said? Victory. We belong, we're already victors. It's already been done. Your healing's already been paid for. Your deliverance has already been paid for. He's already went. Bridget does such a great job with prayer, and I haven't been able to make it because of my travel schedule. I'm going to try to get there soon. But listen, I get the prayer request, and I love getting a prayer request on 10 a.m., and by 12 a.m., we get an email. It's done. But here's a revelation. It was done before then. Come on. It was already done, Bob. All right? So when we think about this, here's the scripture I want to focus on. Turn to Acts chapter 5, verse 12 through 16. And, I, and when I found this, I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. The apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers were, making, were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Porch, or Colonnade as, as they call it. But no one even dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. Yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the streets on the beds and mats so the that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and they, those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all, listen to me, all, everybody say all, all, all healed. So let me just paint a picture, all right? We're going to take it into 2022. Just imagine if, if when the revival breaks out like Jason was, was claiming, that when we're driving up, that there will be beds. They use the term mats. There will be beds and people laying by the side. Okay, so they're walking in. But they put them on the sidewalk, and they would lay them there, that when Peter walked by, that his shadow healed them. And there's Now, you read in verse, uh, let me find a verse here. Uh, Verse 13 says, no one else dared to join them. Why did they not dare to join them? We find out, if you do some studying, like I have been doing, we found out that two people lied to the Holy Spirit when, they, when the apostles approached them and said, uh, did you give this money, all the money to the church like you said you were? Yeah, we give it all. Well, guess what? He died because he lied. Then they brought his wife in and said, hey, did you, and I said, Mr. Sapphire, if you want to look it up, Brought his wife in and said, hey, did you give all the money that you said? And like, Listen, it's your money. It was their money. They sold their property, their field, and they said, we're going to give all the money to the church. Let me give you a revelation. We said this way. Maybe what's holding back your miracle is, is you've made a proclamation to Jesus and you haven't done that yet, and it could be holding that back. I've got great people to help support large ministries. I've got people that stand with me. I've also had people come up to me and said, oh, Brother Kenny, I'm going to be with you through everything. You can count on me. Next week, they're gone. That doesn't always happen. But I've got some. I mean, I've got some testimony throughout. I mean, I've been doing this since 1988. I've been full-time since 2001, you know, and, I mean, you know, traveling and preaching and doing other stuff as well. But, I mean, I've seen some stuff take place. So these people didn't, they didn't have to, Bob, say, I'm going to give it all to there. But they lied to the Holy Spirit. And listen, be honest, if you found out, I'll use me and Kathy example. If we come and we said, now, okay, we're not going to do this. Get to this. Okay? I mean, we may if God speaks to us. But if me and her both took our paychecks together 
And we come in here and say, bless God, we're going to give all of our pay, excuse me, honey, we'll give all of our pay, take, whatever we make next week, we'll just give it all to the church. And then we didn't do it. We died. You would think, oh, they lied, right? <laughs> when you read that scripture, right? Oh, they were just like Ananias and Sapphira. They didn't, they didn't do it. So, so when they brought the lady in and said, did you get in there? Yep, she died. Would you? Want to be around apostles like that? <laughs> That's why they said. Some of them didn't want to, I'm going to go drop my friend off. <laughs> I'm going to go pray with Bridget. So just imagine those people laying there and Peter walking by. Listen to me. It's not Peter healing them. Right. It's the faith in Jesus healing them. It's an act that his shadow would heal them. It's an act that we're believing. We're stepping out in faith. We're, see, I believe that God can do whatever he wants, however he wants, when he wants. But I also know this. Sometimes we get stuck and think he's going to do it the same way every single time. Now, I'm going to show you an example why. I... First time I was ever, ever that I can remember laying hands on someone. Some of you that went to Race Assembly may remember this. It's been a long time ago. But there was a guy named A.C. Hall. And he literally came in the church completely bent over. I'm going to show you, like this. Matter of fact, there's a scripture in the Bible that there was a lady bent over for how many years? A long, so imagine if you walked in every time like this. Hello, Bob, how are you doing? Well, how'd you know it was Bob? I just felt his presence. Hey, how are you doing? And walked around like that the whole time. And so AC came in and, his, and he was there and, and they, they called for people to pray for him. And the pastor said, hey, can you come up and pray for him? So I got the oil and I anointed his head and I put my hand on his back. Listen to me. It's not me. Listen to me. Not me. Not me. God gets the credit. All right. I laid my hand on his back and I'm trying to be spiritual and close my eyes because that's the way I watch people do it. But then his back began to move. And I'm not talking like one muscle. His whole back, Jason, was like a washboard. And so then I'm just trying to be spiritual, but I want to see what's going on. And I've got my eyes closed, and I'm like, Lord, in the name of Jesus, heal, AC, Lord. And then I'm like, let's get one eye open to see what's going on over there. And then as it kept doing it, I got the second eye open. And then, I let, and then all at once he goes like this. He pops up. And takes off running around the church. Listen, since that was, I'm going to guess, 1989 or 90. Since then, I personally have never prayed for anyone and that happened. But what we get stuck in the groove is think it's going to happen the same way every single time. Right. And we also think it's going to happen by having the same person pray for us. Yeah. We'll give you another example. I was, in, um, I was in Dallas, Texas. And if I mentioned this person, you would know the person because they're on national TV. And they told me the testimony and they said, we had this lady call and she would call on me for prayer every single time, and which was okay. But he said, finally, I, they, he, she would call and ask prayer for her husband. So finally he said, uh, I'm going to ask you something. Will you do something before I pray for you on the phone or come there? Will you do something for me? And the lady said, yes. He said, you're relying on me to pray for your husband all the time. Have you prayed for him? And the lady said, I always call you. Listen to me. Her faith was in that pastor. Listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you. Come here, my, come here, my buddy. Put that phone down. Come up with your slick hair. <laughs> Listen to me. I have asked him to pray for me many times. I believe he's prayed for me times I didn't ask. Yes. Kenny Large has got calls from him when he says, pray for me. Kenny Large has prayed for him when times he didn't. 
but I don't broadcast it and say, okay, Peter done that. He didn't broadcast his shadow going. Just imagine, could you, listen to me. I just saw this. Could you imagine our staff and leaders in a church walking and shadows just healing people? Yeah. Yeah. Coming out of beds, coming out of hospital, right. being delivered. And it's not, it's, listen, it's not Kenny and Jason. It's our faith in Jesus. Right. Yes. Yes. It's our faith in Jesus. Why? He's my friend. I trust him. We're different. Listen to me. But our faith is in the right place. But I, here's, why, here's why I'm preaching on miracles, Joe. I want to see them. Joe has, Joe's been around longer. He's a little bit older than me, just by a couple years. Yeah, two anyway. Yeah, two. He said two anyway. And maybe he's seen some things. Like, I've seen some things, but I want to see more. I want to see things. I want to see, I, Bridget, I want to see miracles. I want, I, I want to see the place that where you don't get no prayer request. Maybe you ought to stretch our faith that way. That's a great avenue that we can email her and email somebody that, we, that she just says, I, I want to get an email like this one week from Bridget. We have no prayer requests this week because everybody's healed. I want to get a prayer re- I want to get one upset. Everybody's financial needs are met at Kingsway Church. Come on. So Peter's walking through and he's in, and, and, and you go back and some of the people, I don't know, here's my thinking. I, I just, like I said, I already showed you what I do in the airport and I think about things and crazy things. I'm watching crazy stuff. I, I mean, even at, they had those airport, uh, I don't even know what you call them, little four-wheelers or whatever they are and beeping and they pit people that can't get to the gate or wheelchair, handicapped people on them. Here's what, I, I was just sitting there, Jason, I was sitting there watching people and I was just like, I wonder if. Anybody's ever got ran over by one of those pieces of equipment? <laughs> That's me. That's the way I think. I'm just thinking like, wow, that thing can do some damage. And I almost, I almost stopped one guy and just asked that. But he was such in a hurry, he was beeping for me. Out of the way, get out, beep, 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 beep. Listen to this. The mature are those who know the difference between the shadow and the substance. Peter's shadow healed people because of who Peter knew. Don't accept any negativity identity that has been imposed on you. People never, listen to me, people never live at a higher level than they see themselves to be. It's time for us to get to another level, all right? But we as Christians are created in the image of God. Know yourself and simply be who you are to be. They can come to the instruments, and I'm going to get ready to close in just a minute. This miracle in Acts took place at Solomon's porch was a common meeting place of believers, and it also was a rallying place of the needy. People that had needs, they had needs. You hear people, when you read in the Bible that they, the, the gate, the guy at the gate called Beautiful, he was there. I got that's another, that's one of my radars to preach that, Acts chapter 3. But what a sight this must have been as, as they're walking through this and as through healing shadow, Peter, listen, there is nothing here to, to, to suggest that the contradiction of the laws of the governing ways of supernatural and that Peter's getting credit. Peter, how many, how many have read about Peter? Peter was with, he was at Jesus, when Jesus was about ready to be crucified, Peter was one of those three, I, I say it this way, the three amigos, Peter, James, and John. And Peter was with him when Jesus said, can you pray with me all night? Peter went to sleep. Jesus came back and said, can't you pray with me at least one hour? Peter went to sleep. How many of you go to sleep when you're praying? How many go to sleep when you're reading the Bible? Bunch of Peters. 
But see, but I, I'm there too. All right? I'm there too. And so when we think about this and, and they're doing this, Peter, after that, Jesus went to and they arrested him. And Peter's hanging around because he's cold and they got a fire pit going. And he's getting warm and then this little girl goes, he's one of those. No, I'm not. Jesus already said when the, when the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me. When the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. No way, Lord, I'm going to be with you through thick and thin. Peter, he saw these miracles that Jesus done. I'm going to give you a revelation. Just Hang with me. Second time, they say it again. Third time, Peter cries, runs off. Matter of fact, he even says something he shouldn't say. How many ever said something you shouldn't say? Once again, you bunch of Peters. I should, I'm going to change the sermon to a bunch of Peters. <laughs> but Jesus turned it all around and used Peter to heal people as he walked by. Here's my confession to you. I've messed up. My life is not perfect. It has not been perfect. I'm going to give you another revelation. It's probably not never going to be perfect in me. But what it is perfect is in him. And he can use Peter. He can use you. Jesus could heal directly without contact of any kind. The prayer of faith was present in every incident. And listen, I'm, all, I'm not going to give you the last couple of scriptures. I'm going to skip those. But Jesus is always good, and his word, listen to me, this word is better than all your fears. All your fears. Put them all in a bucket, all the fears. Y'all stand with me as they're getting ready to play. And I want everyone this morning to bow your head and close your eyes or anyone here at all that says, Kenny, I'm not saved. I do not know Jesus as my Savior. And if that's you, just lift up your hand. 